I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to make this Cinco de Mayo inspired sugar skull poncho. It's definitely a kid's poncho. It's lots of bright colors, lots of fun. I also made this with the intention to show you how you can take all the different motifs and aspects that, that you find on, on, my, on my channel and other channels and put them together to create one project. Welcome to Weaving Weird Studio and My Creative Weird Life. My name is Sig, and what a pleasure it is to have you with me at this time. It's your interest and support that allows me to contribute new content and weekly videos. Help us all grow together by tapping that subscribe bar, notification bell, and like buttons. I look forward to your comments and always value your feedback. Now, this video is a little unusual in that I have several links below, several links below to various different tutorials that will show you how to make various aspects of this, of this poncho. So for example, on this poncho, I'll quickly explain how you can piece everything together in, in, in the way that makes sense. Also in this video, I will show you how to make the lacy border for the poncho itself. For those of you who don't know how to do a reverse, single crochet or a crab stitch. I'm also going to show you how to do that in this video as well. But really my main goal is just to show you how you can take all the different aspects from several different tutorials and create one fun, functional, and exciting project. This is a kid's size poncho. It's like a, it's not a little, little kid's poncho, but it's a one size fits all. So it's going to fit Oh, your elementary school kids for sure. Now, if you have a younger child than that, who's just a really big kid, then it'll probably fit them. And if you have a teenager who's really petite, it would probably fit them as well. So it sits right there in the middle. And these colors are the colors that I chose. And so I have that information in the description box below. Now, if you don't like these colors, by all means, you can figure out how much of whatever colors you would like to use just by taking a look at what I've listed in the description box because really quite frankly what you see in the description box is pretty much what it took for me to make this poncho. Okay so let's go ahead and get started. So for today's poncho it's a, as you know I've mentioned before it's a child size single day mile poncho. And I am using the sugar skull granny squares that I did an earlier tutorial on. And, you know, still using the same, the same color yarns, uh, which I had left over, in fact, from the three skeins that I used for the main portion of those, of those blocks that I used for the granny square. And then I've also added this green. I had this green acrylic yarn lying around and it's just about the right color. It works really well with, with the granny squares that I have. So, so why not? Why not use up what I have lying around in my stash? And boy, let me tell you, I have a stash. I'm always collecting yarn. People give it to me. You know, it's, it's here. And so I'm trying to use what I have these days. But with that said, so we're going to go ahead and continue using a G-size hook. And then also, again, the yarn needle and a pair of scissors. So for this project, you're going to need a total of six of the granny squares from the Sugar Skull Granny Square tutorial that I did a little while ago. We're going to use the same black on three of those granny squares for to trim a little bit and then also three of those we're going to use the white on now if you wanted to make your poncho a little smaller you're going to have to adjust the count but you wouldn't have to use or add additional trim at all if you wanted to make it smaller maybe for a toddler you could simply use the granny square as directed in the tutorial that that I have out for you to utilize but this is for a child, and so what I'm doing in this video today is giving you the count for a larger size poncho, and so for that we need to make the squares a little bigger. So before we get started, I'd just like to remind you that 
information with regards to how much yarn and the type of yarn that I used for this particular project is going to be posted in the description box below. So this is one of the granny squares that I'm going to use. I've already got the project started. So as you can see right here, I've got some of these granny squares outlined in the black, two of them so far. And then I have two of them outlined in the white. And it's pretty basic, it's pretty simple. What I'm going to start to do for my first round and the couple other rounds after that, in fact, in many ways, I'm really going to just mirror the design that I've already done with this rainbow yarn, with just a little bit of a difference. So for my first round, I'm going to half double crochet and I'm going to start anywhere really. So I'll just start in this particular corner and I'm going to use my black and tie in. And I'm going to chain two. And then for each stitch across, I'm just simply going to half double crochet. Now that I've come here to this corner stitch, I'm going to half double crochet and then I'm going to chain two and I'm going to half double crochet again right into that same stitch. And then I'm going to half double crochet in each stitch after that until I hit the next corner, at which time I will put a half double crochet plus a chain plus another half double crochet into that same stitch. And I'm going to continue that pattern all the way around. Okay. So at this point, we're going to want to join. Once we've completed this first round of this black trim part of our of our granny square for the poncho and then I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to chain four one two three four and I did the slip stitch pretty much in the same stitch then I'm going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to double crochet in the stitch after that And I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to skip a stitch and double crochet in the stitch after that. And skip a stitch and double crochet in the stitch after that. Now we're going to keep on doing this for the length of this square until we get to the corner and then I'll show you what to do. It's really pretty similar to how we managed the trim when we initially made the granny square itself. So it's not that much different. A lot of it is mostly a, a repeat in a way, with just some slight variations. Okay, now I'm back into the center of this corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double crochet into that chain two space. And then I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to double crochet again into that chain two space. And then I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to continue as before. I'm going to skip one and then double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the next stitch. I'm going to continue to do that until I hit the next corner, at which time I'm going to double crochet into the chain two space chain three and then double crochet back again into that chain two space before I pick up on the regular pattern of chain one, skip one, double crochet. 
And this is what the second round of this trim is going to be. And I will meet you back here in just a moment after that is finished. Okay, now we're going to join. And I'm going to chain two. I'm going to do one more round in the black. And this round is going to be half double crochets again. So basically in each stitch. So I'm going to then do a half double crochet into the chain one space. And then a half double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. And then a half double crochet into the chain one space. And half double crochet into the double crochet stitch. I'm going to continue this all the way down until I hit that corner. And then at the corner, as before, when we hit the corner, we're going to do three half double crochet stitches in the corner. So I'm going to do one half double crochet stitch pretty much for each stitch. For each double crochet in each chain one space. And then when I get here to this chain three spaces here on the corner, I'm going to put three half double crochets into those corners. And that's just what this third round is going to be. And when we get back around, we're going to finish off the black and we're going to start our next. So now that we've completed the trim in the black or the white, depending on where you happen to be at, I'm now going to pull in my next color, which happens to be green. And again, you know, just kind of start anywhere you want. Just tie that in. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to single crochet in that same stitch. And then I'm going to single crochet in each stitch after that. At least until I get to the corner. And I do something a little different at the corner. And I'll show you what that is here momentarily. So we get to that second stitch here in this chain three space. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain or single crochet two. And then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to single crochet two more. And that gives me a nice clean edge, a nice clean point. And that is something we really want because this is where we're going to sew our squares together at and so in order to keep in order to keep this garment hanging with a nice drape and you know clean without any puckers we want to have nice clean corners and sharp corners and then I'm going to continue single crochet all the way down the length of this until we get to the next corner at which time again, I'll go to the second single crochet in that chain three space. And then I'm going to single crochet two, chain one, and then single crochet two more. Another thing you want to keep in mind with regards to these blocks is each side of the block is going to have a count of 44 stitches. Okay, 44 stitches on each side of the block. And that's going to be important because that's what the, the count of the trim, when we get to the trim, is going to be predicated on. So, because granny squares are granny squares, and sometimes we miss a stitch or add a stitch, right? So it's not going to be necessarily uncommon to find maybe one of your sides is off a stitch. Or maybe even two. If you find that, don't freak out. Don't get too worried or upset. Just go ahead and in some evenly spaced part just add in an extra single crochet. So let's say you need your 44 stitches total, but all you have available are 42 
single crochets along the length. That's all you're going to get if you just go with the single crochets you already have available. Well, in that case, you might decide, okay, well, I'll put two single crochets in a stitch here, and then maybe I'll put two single crochets in a stitch down here at this juncture, and then that's going to end up giving me a total of the 44 stitches along this edge, and it's going to disappear and blend right into the work. But it's very important that we have the same amount of stitches on each edge. So in this case, it's 44 stitches. So if you have to add a stitch or maybe you have to decrease a stitch because you've got one or two more stitches than you need, then, um, then do that because that'll be really, really important. But don't worry too much because it's not going to take away from your work. In fact, you probably won't even notice it once it's done and once it's finished. Okay, so let me continue on like this. And then when I finish this last round, I'm going to come back and show you how to sew these squares together. So as you can see, I've already sewn on all my blocks except for this last one, the sixth one. And I've made sure that my count is 44 across on each edge. And then I'm going to decide which edges. So these two edges are going to fit like so. So I'm going to end up sewing through two edges together, but three blocks together. So I have this block and I have this block. And then I have this last block, and that will complete the basic bottom part of the poncho. And later in this video, I will show you how to make the upper torso part of the poncho, where the head and neck part of the poncho are at. But right now, I'm just showing you how to do this, this middle to lower part of the poncho. So basically, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut some yarn, some yarn that matches my green. I'm going to use my yarn needle, of course. And then I'm going to weave my needle in. just to anchor it before we get started. Okay, and I'm going to turn my work a little bit. And then I'm going to take it, I'm going to come right up here through the back loop of this corner single or chain. Remember the single chain that we had crocheted here at the corner? I'm just going to come in through that back loop. And then I'm going to just basically whip stitch back loops only in each corresponding stitch. Now you might be tempted to just skip stitches or rush this through, but you don't want to do that. You want to whip stitch in each of the back stitches together and you want to make sure that there's one whip stitch per set of corresponding stitches. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to make sure that your count of 44 is accurate as well as needing that accurate count for when we do the trim. Because the trim we're going to crochet or the trim I'm going to use, I'm going to crochet it in one in one continuous circle. So the count is going to be pretty important. You're not going to be able to fudge that. Not too much at any rate if you find that you've made a mistake and can't figure out where you've made your mistake at. So I'm going to continue that. All the way down this 
side. And then when I get to this end right here, I am going to continue sewing down the next, the other side of this. Now, as you work, make sure that your work is actually facing you, right? So a lot of times when we sew, we sew from, we sew with the wrong side of our work facing us. But in this one, you want the right side of your work facing you so that you can see, get a clear view of those back stitches. And then you can see it gives us a nice clean seam between our granny squares. Okay, so let me go ahead and get that finished up and I will let you go ahead and get all your blocks sewn together. And then I'll meet you right back here with what we will be doing next with regards to the bottom trim of our poncho. Okay, so I've jumped ahead a little bit and I've actually completed the lace border of this poncho ahead of time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the lace border on, on a different granny square. So on that square, it'll be easier for me to show you. You can see it more easily within the viewfinder of my camera. So once you've sewn or whip stitched your six granny squares together and you have two points and two long edges right basically the the base of your poncho you are now going to want to half double crochet along the entire border of your poncho and that's going to give you approximately 400 stitches and you want 400 stitches so it's basically going to be 200 from corner to corner giving you a total of 400 half double crochets around the base of your poncho where we're going to begin this lacy border piece okay so as you can see i just went ahead and i half double crocheted around a part of this granny square and for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just pretend this part is actually the point of our of our poncho. Because this is really all I need to show you how to do the lacy border on the entire piece. So your first row is your half double crochet all the way around that. Now for the next round, I want to single crochet in each one of those half double crochets. So now for round three, you can't just start anywhere. What you need to do is you need to figure out where the corner of your, of your poncho is at, the point of your poncho. And you're going to have two of those points. And you need to figure out where the first point is at. Easy enough, of course. And then from there, you're going to count back 40 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to begin round three by chaining four. Then I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to double crochet in the next stitch. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to skip a stitch and then I'm going to double crochet in the next stitch. And I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to double crochet in the next stitch. One. I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to double crochet and I want to do this a total of 13 times we have 14 double crochets and 13 chain one spaces okay so you're basically going to be working this in multiples of 27 so as this stands, you're going to have 14 double crochets and you're going to have 13 chain one spaces. And that gives you a total of 27 stitches.
stitches. And the edges are worked in multiples of 27 stitches. As is the corner also basically, but there's a little bit of a difference. Okay, so this is what we're going to focus on next. So when I come to my corner, right, and you have two of these, I'm gonna begin like I normally would begin my multiple of 27 by making a double crochet. So at this juncture, you're going to have two double crochets together or side by side. And then I'm going to chain one. I'm gonna skip a stitch and double crochet. I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna skip a stitch and I'm going to double crochet. I'm gonna chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet. And chain one, and skip a stitch, and double crochet. And then I'm going to do it one more time. Chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet. So at this juncture, you should have seven half double crochets and six chain one spaces. Now, because we're at the corner, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and I'm going to double crochet right back into that same stitch there for the corner. And I'm going to chain one. I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to double crochet. Then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to double crochet. And I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet. Do it two more times. Chain one, skip a stitch, double crochet. And I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to skip a, skip, skip a stitch, and double crochet. Okay, so with that corner, so basically you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 double crochets. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 single spaces. And then we're going to start the next multiple of 27 by beginning in the next stitch with a double crochet. And then you'll just repeat this first multiple of 20. So this is how it should line up. So your count should line up with your corner. And this is what your round three for your lace should look like, your lacy border. So now for round four, we're going to pretend like we've made it all the way around and we've joined. I'm now going to chain one. And I'm going to single crochet in that same stitch. And I'm going to single crochet six more times. One. Two. Three. four, five, and six. Then I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to half double crochet in the next double crochet stitch. I'm going to chain two again. And then I'm going to skip the next double crochets and I'm going to make two, three double crochet bobbles in this chain one space. And they'll be separated by a chain of two. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to put in my first double crochet bobble, one, two, and three, this 
Bobble happens to have three double crochets that make it up. I'm going to chain two. And I'm going to put in one more in this same chain one space. So it's going to be a one, two, and three. So now I'm going to chain two. And I'm going to skip the next two double crochets and I'm going to half double crochet in the third double crochet. And then I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next double crochet stitch. Now I need to crochet 13 more single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, Next thing I need to do, now that we're at the corner, our corners are going to be a little different. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to half double crochet in the next double crochet. I'm going to chain two. And this time I'm going to Skip the next two double crochets as we had done before. But in this corner, I am going to put four of the three double crochet bobbles. So that'll be the first bobble. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to work on the second bobble here. The second bobble, chain two. I'm going to work on the third bobble. Chain two. And then we're going to put one more bobble in there. And we're going to chain two. I'm going to skip the next two double crochets. And then I'm going to half double crochet into the next. I'm going to chain two. And I'm going to single crochet into the next double crochet and then I'm going to single crochet one two three four five and six more and then that is the end of this corner that we're working on I'm going to pretend that's the round. You will continue on repeating this section of your border for the next several stitches until you hit your next corner. Just take a look at the, the written instructions. That should help. Okay, so now we're moving on to round five. And we're going to make a single chain. And then we are going to single crochet in that same stitch. And I'm going to make four more single crochets. Next, I'm going to chain three. One, two, 
three. And I'm going to double crochet in the next half double crochet. I'm going to chain three again. One, two, three. And I'm going to double crochet into the first bobble. Then I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to then make a chain three. Peacock. And then I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to double crochet in the next bobble stitch. So you should have something that looks like this. I'm going to chain three. And I'm going to double crochet in the next half double crochet. Then I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to single crochet into that third single crochet. So I'm going to count one, two, and the third single crochet from my hook. And then I'm going to single crochet nine more times. Then I'm going to chain three and I'm going to double crochet into the next half double crochet. I'm going to chain three again and I'm going to double crochet into the next or the first bobble. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do a three chain peacock. And then I'm going to chain two. And I'm going to do a double crochet into the next bobble. Then I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to do a three chain peacock. I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to do a double crochet into the next bobble stitch. I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to do a three chain peacock. And I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to do a double crochet into that last bobble. So your corner should look like this. And then I'm going to chain three. And I'm going to double crochet into the next half double crochet. And I'm going to chain three again. And then I'm going to single crochet into that third single crochet from my hook. And I'm going to single crochet four more times. Okay, now assuming that I've completed my round five, I'm going to now begin round six. So again, after you've joined, you're going to chain one and you're going to single crochet in that same stitch. 
you can single crochet two more. And then you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And you're going to double crochet in the next double crochet. Then you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're going to double crochet into the next double crochet. Then you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're going to double crochet into the next double crochet. You're going to chain six one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to double crochet into the next double crochet. And then you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And you're going to double, or you're sorry, you're going to single crochet into the third single crochet from your hook. So your piece should resemble this. So then I'm going to single crochet five more. One, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. And then I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to double crochet into the next double crochet. I'm going to chain six, two, three, four, five, six. Double crochet into the next double crochet. And I'm going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then again, double crochet into the next double crochet. And then one more time, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then double crochet into the next double crochet. And then I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to single crochet into that third single crochet from the hook. And then I'm going to single crochet two more times to finish off that section. So now your lace should look like this, particularly at that corner. Now, after you've made your round and you've come all the way back around here, back to the beginning, you're going to again join and chain one, assuming you're using the same color. If you're switching up colors, then this would probably be about the time that you change your color. At any rate, you're still going to chain one, and then you're going to single crochet in that same stitch. You're going to single crochet again. And then you're going to single crochet five in this chain four space. So one, 
two, three, four, and five. And then in each chain six space, you're going to single crochet seven. And then five times in this chain four space. And then I'm going to skip the next single crochet and I'm going to single crochet in the following single crochets. One, two, three, and four until I get to that last single crochet stitch which would be this one and then I'm going to begin my single crochet in the chain spaces again. So in the chain four space I'm going to single crochet five. In the chain six spaces I'm going to single crochet seven. And so once I've come back to the single crochets, I'm going to skip that first single crochet and I am going to single crochet in the next two single crochets. So now your piece should look something like this. And then our final round is going to be round eight. And of course, once you make your round, you're going to join. You're going to chain one, and then you're going to single crochet in that same stitch. And then you're going to chain one again. Then you're going to single crochet in that fourth single crochet from your hook. Then I'm going to chain two and I'm going to double crochet right into this corner stitch. Basically I'm skipping two single crochets. And then I'm going to double crochet right there. Then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to make a three chain picot. I'm going to skip a stitch and then I'm going to double crochet into the next single crochet. Then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to make a three chain picot. Then I'm going to double crochet into the next single crochet. So again, I'm going to chain one. And do a three chain picot. And then I'm going to skip a single crochet, skip a stitch, and then I'm going to double crochet into the next single crochet. I'm going to do this a few more times. So I've got a total of 10 of the double crochet picot stitches. So now I'm going to chain two and I'm going to skip two single crochets and I'm going to single crochet into that third one. Then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Then I'm going to skip eight single crochets and in that ninth single crochet I'm going to make a single crochet. And then I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to skip two single crochets. And in that next single crochet, I'm going to make a double crochet. 
and I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to make my three chain picot. And then I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to double crochet in that next single crochet. I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to make a three chain picot. And I'm going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to double crochet in the next. Okay, now that I've completed my 17 picots, I'm going to chain two. I'm going to skip two single crochets and I'm going to single crochet into that third single crochet from my hook. And then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. So now after chaining my three, I'm going to end here, but you would continue by connecting into your next lacy roundy part of your edging and you would connect into that third single crochet in the chain four crochet space where you had the five single crochets in that space and then you'd continue on and this would be your last row and when finished this is basically what you would have so now that we've finished the border lacy part of our poncho i'm going to move on to explaining to you how to finish the rest of your poncho so here at the top part of our poncho at the top end of our sugar skull granny squares I have taken a darker blue. It's like a turquoise blue. It sort of plays really well with this, with this mint green. And so what I did was I went and I single crocheted just along this neck end of the poncho, all the way around, all the way around that top opening. Now, the only things you really have to remember is when you come down here to this point, you're going to want to do three of the single crochets together so you're going to want to take this point right here where you have this first where you have this single crochet and this single crochet and this single crochet all coming together at a single point and that's just because of the way this piece or the opening comes down here to a point so we want it to we want to have a nice transition a nice a nice trim if you will without any puckering then the next thing I do is I take these small granny squares that I've titled basically Desert Flower Granny Square. There will be links below for you to show you how to make these. So basically this right here, except here I've done it in black and white. And what you're going to do is you're going to need 10 of these. And these 10... You're just going to whip stitch them together just as just whip stitching them the same way you whip stitch the sugar skull granny squares together except these are not bordered out these are just exactly the same size as as the tutorial shows you how to make them and then once you have them stitched together and you have kind of this complete circle for lack of a better description you know where, where you have all all 10 of them stitched together. You're going to go ahead and you're going to take in my, your, your color, the color that you used for your trim. In my case, it's kind of this turquoise blue. And you're going to single crochet the open edges all the way around on your ringlet of small granny squares. And then once you've done that, it's a matter of taking your top ringlet 
for lack of a better description, and lining it up with the bottom part of your poncho and whip stitching all of that together. So basically you're whip stitching your top half to your bottom half. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is at this, at this edge right here, you are going to want to go ahead and at some point tie in another round and you're basically going to do kind of a lattice work. So much like everywhere else on, on, on your poncho, this part is not that different because what you're going to do is you're going to chain your four and then you're going to double crochet. You're going to skip a stitch and double crochet. And then you're going to chain one and then you're going to skip a stitch and you're going to double crochet. Then you're going to chain one again, skip a stitch and double crochet. And that gives you this, this lattice work that see in various design aspects of this poncho. But not only is it kind of a nice open cut work look, it's also a great way to run your I cord or your drawstring through. And that's exactly what we did. So after I did that, then I went through and I half double crocheted in each stitch along the top of that lattice work that we had just finished. And I did it in, in the turquoise blue. I then finished the piece off with a reverse single crochet or a crab stitch. Now this, if you can hang tight, I'll show you how to do this one real fast. But your I cord or your drawstring in this case, I have a link to a tutorial on how to make that. And in my case, I'm, I just used all the scrap yarn that I had and I made it kind of various different colors, which really goes well with this particular poncho. Also, at the end of my eye cords, I put tassels. Now, you may or may not like the tassels. I mean, tassels are optional. If you want to go with the tassels and do not know how to make them, just go ahead and click on to the link that I've already offered in the description box below that shows you how to make tassels. It's actually a video for tassel dolls, but it shows you how to make the tassels and, and how to and how to attach them to your cording. Now, if you'd rather something other than tassels, of course, you could use a, a big bead that has a large enough hole in it for your eye cord, or you could crochet, you know, a little, a little toy or a little stuffed something and hang it off the ends too. Or you could simply leave the ends just as just as they were you know just as you finished off your eye cord just plain so all of that's good too or you could tie it in a knot there's different ways you can do that so just a quick recap this stitch right here which i'll show you how to do here in just a couple of minutes is a reverse single crochet if you do not know how to do that already it's a great way to finish off a piece and with this rainbow yarn it you know it gives it kind of a fun look Then of course this top part here, the top part of the poncho is made by using 10 of these desert flower granny squares. The link to, as to how to make these is also below in the description box. And you whip stitch all 10 together in a, in a ring. And just make sure that it lines up with the shape of your poncho. And then of course you're going to go ahead and you're going to single crochet an edging along the length of of your of your small granny squares and by this point you would have already included the single crochet edging of the of in my case the turquoise blue along the top edge of our skull granny squares and then you just take the two the top portion of the poncho with the bottom portion of the poncho and then you just come right down through here whip stitching the two pieces together but don't forget that here at the corners, anywhere where you have a corner, like where your two sides come and meet at a corner, consider 
crocheting your three stitches together into one stitch just so that it pulls everything nicely together. And that's about it. Any square that I've been using to show you the other examples of this of the steps we're taking to make this poncho with. I'm also going to use the same granny square to show you how to make a reverse single crochet or a crab stitch for those of you who aren't familiar with that stitch. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take this blue that I happen to have. And what you're going to do is it's basically just like it sounds. It's a single crochet, but you work it in the reverse. So basically a reverse single crochet. So you're going to tie on like you would anything else. And then instead of inserting your hook going towards the left, if you're right handed, you're going to take your hook and you're going to insert it into the stitch to your right. And then you're going to pull your yarn through just like so. And then you're going to yarn over and pull that through. And that is your first stitch. You're going to continue that way. You're going to insert your hook and pull your yarn through, yarn over and pull that. And then you're going to insert your hook again. Pull your yarn through, yarn over and then pull that yarn through. So now you can see this kind of nice spirally look that finishes an edge off quite nicely. It's one of my favorite edge finisher offers. And there you go. And that is all there is to it. This is called a reverse single crochet or also known as a crab stitch. So now is the time for me to say goodbye. And so until I see all of you wonderful and creative fiber artists again, stay crafty, stay amazing, and above all, keep weaving your weird. Bye-bye now.